So let's explain the difference between these. They look pretty similar, but they're not the same thing. This is called the equation of state. So the equation of state means what's the state or the status of the atmosphere right now. So the first one is pressure equals what? So if I rearranged this equation down here on the lower right, I would get this equation, right? And but I mean by rearrange, I mean I divided by the Boltzmann constant and the temperature, and I also divided by capital V. The questions we have to understand are what are these symbols? So what is P and what is V? Right, pressure times volume is equal to number of molecules times the Boltzmann constant times temperature. It's different than these lapse rates because these lapse rates are just the rate at which temperature decreases with height. The temperature is in Kelvin in these equations. If they asked you to solve for P over KT, now by the way, I'm putting the subscript B on K only because there are so many K constants in science, I don't want it to be confused. This K is the Boltzmann constant. N over V is sometimes called script N, which is called the number density. Now the number density is gonna have units of number of molecules per volume. So the units are typically gonna be number per meter cubed. Good question. Centimeters cubed is just converting units from meters cubed. The SI unit, now when I mean by SI, I mean the international system. In other words, the system where all the units divide out perfectly evenly, like the standard system would be per cubic meter. You could convert meters cubed to centimeters cubed. Because we know that there's 100 centimeters in every meter, so it's 100 times 100 times 100, so it's going to be so 10 to the sixth cubic centimeters are in a cubic meter. If you know the percent of a chemical by volume, then you take its percentage as a decimal and you multiply it by the density and you get the partial density. So you get the density, the number density of just those molecules. So it's going to be 4.12 times 10 to the 23rd. Yep. Now that's going to be units of number per cubic centimeter, right? And if you want to be even more technical, it's number of molecules per centimeters cubed of air. So think about that. Number of molecules of oxygen per centimeters cubed of air. Hopefully one of the things you're already seeing is that we do try to be very precise when we communicate some of these ideas. Each of these, we have to find the oxygen. Okay, so I think each of these, we're gonna multiply by the 0 0.20, right? By the way, it's gonna have the same units as this. Mm -hmm times 10 to the 23rd times 0 0.20. So 6.14 times 10 to the 22nd. So let's, let's go back to the ideal gas law. So think about this, right? Like the question is, the density is most closely related to the pressure. Because if I divide this by B, I just get P equals script N. Let me do this like this, script N times KB times T. Do you think the pressure at that particular altitude is gonna change very much? I'd say no. Generally, pressures at various altitudes in the atmosphere don't change very much. Temperature changes a lot more rapidly. And part of the reason for that is because it takes a long time for temperature to diffuse, whereas it doesn't take very long for pressure to equalize. Like, wh which travels faster? Like a clap to your ear, or when you touch your hand to the stove, it takes a few seconds for the, the heat to go into your hand. The, the sound clearly goes faster than the heat. So generally the speed of pressure is much, much faster than the speed of temperature. If the temperature were to go up, but the pressure were to stay constant, in the summer, what would happen to the density? I think it would go down in the summer. So it is gonna get denser in the winter because when the temperature decreases, so this is the winter, right? That's another thing I should briefly say to you. Typically in meteorology, whenever possible, we use red is typically used for warm and blue is typically used for cold. If the temperature goes down from this equation, you're dividing by a smaller number. So that means that, that density should go up in the winter. 
let's assume that the pressure is roughly constant. Now again, there's reasons behind that, but we assume that the pressure at various altitudes stays roughly constant throughout the year. Pressure doesn't change nearly as much as temperature does. Assuming the pressure is nearly constant throughout the year, then as the temperature decreases, the number density increases, just like we're showing here in the blue. You're dividing by a smaller number, so that means the N, the script N, gets larger. Here's the deal, I explained it to you mathematically, but now I'd like to explain it to you scientifically, which is intuitively. The idea is this, in the winter, when the temperature is colder, are the molecules moving faster or slower? They're moving slower. So if they're moving slower, do you think they're closer together or further apart? So if they're not moving as fast, they're closer together, because the temperature is lower. Thus, if you take a sample of air, the molecules being closer, they're more packed in, oh, which no, means the density is higher. 